Hey, welcome back to another photo app tutorial. I think we're about part seven or eight by now. And uh, what I'd like to do is activate the button called load. In the previous videos, we were able to take a photo using the camera. Load is supposed to take a existing photo that's in the photo gallery and display it in our image view. So in your real apps that you're probably going to create, you're gonna have both take pictures and load from memory. So load is next. So let's go look at the uh, options that we can do. So at the top of the screen, I have a button called take, another one called list, and then the third one called load. This is the one we're going to work with. So let's go into the uncreate area and uh, we're going to create a new click listener. So button load is what I want. So I will set a set on click listener method and then a new on click listener function inside. Now we have the on click method. So the two things we have to do in this method are to create an intent to go get something from the gallery and then start the intent with a specific request code that will be unique. So let's create the usual intent and I'll call it I and it will be a new intent. What can we do inside of there? Well, I'm going to type in the word intent again and then put a period. What else can we do with intents? So there's all kinds of things and I'm looking for the capital letters. So as you browse through the list here, you'll notice that these are all different things that are associated with the operating system. So we can check to see if we want to make a phone call. It says a camera button, a carrier up. You see if you're connected to your cell phone character. What I'm looking for is something called pick. So pick a piece of media, I think it is. So pick, here we go, pick. Let's go with that one, action pick. So pick means pick something from a photo gallery. So I'm going to type in android.provider. So provider means these are sources of information. And what do I have for providers in Android? So I'm looking at android.provider. And all of the things that the operating system can provide to us are listed here. So you can see there's media store, which is probably the one we want. But we could also pick something if we wanted to get the alarm clock to see what time it is or to see when the next alarm is. We've got a browser so we can get uh, whatever's coming from the internet, a call log, we could read from previous calls. There's all kinds of things that the operating system provides to us. So we're trying to pick something from the media store. So let's just choose media store. What else is in there? So in the media store, there's all kinds of things we can get there. Uh, we can get, uh, what else do we have? Uh, anything that looks good? Here we go, we got audio, we could do a file, Images. I like the looks of that one. So we want to get an image. So images. Do we have more options? Well, we need an image to come from our media. Okay, so media dot, and we still have more options. So we're looking for media that is in the uh, external storage area. So is there anything about external? Let's type in EX. There it is external content URI. So you can see that there's like hundreds of choices of things that we can ask for when we pick a new, a new uh, source of data. But this one here is going to let us pick a picture. So how did I figure all that out? Well, I looked it up, okay? So you can also figure it out by, as I was doing, browsing through the options in our Android resources. Okay, so we've got an intent that says, Hey, go out there and find an application that will show us a picture. And your photo gallery will respond, because that's the one that's programmed to uh, respond to that kind of an intent. So we're going to start an activity with I. Now we don't want just start an activity. That will just uh, launch an activity. So we want to start an activity for result. Okay, so the result means we're going to expect something to come back. So we're going to launch I, and then the result code. So we need to put in a unique number. So we can put in a two, and that will give us something different than before. So instead of using the hard-coded two, though, I'm gonna go up to here at the top and make another function. So let's call it static uh, final. That's not really a function, it's a, uh, it's a static ID. So let's call it select a photo, and that's gonna be equal to two. So we'll use select a photo as our static identifier. So that means uh, we're going to launch an activity. 
Well, when it comes back, it's going to look in this uh, look in this method called on activity request. So let's uh, let's take a look here at what we did the first time, and copy this line of code and make another one. So instead of saying request take photo, what was my other one? It was called um, select a photo, right? So if select a photo is chosen and the return value is an OK button, we have a new uh, photo selected. So what kind of data comes back? Remember, this parameter here called data will send back some information. And in this case, it will fill data in with the URI of the photo. So let's say URI. Now, I want you to be careful. There's two different URIs. You notice if I type capital URI, I get one. This is from java.net. And then if you type in U underscore, on a lowercase ri, you get something from android.net. Well, this really confused me at first. And just to let you know that android.net is the one that seems to work better. So I'm going to use the underscore, the lowercase. So I'm going to assume that the data that is sent back is the URI for the selected photo. So now I want to be able to place this into the image view. So let's uh, take the previous example and copy those lines. So we have an, a reference to the image view. So we're going to use glide. So let's copy the glide line too as well. And instead of using the pathway, we're going to have the word selected photo. So whatever URI was selected from the gallery will be sent here. Now we've got the uh, other for the text view, so we'll copy that and bring it down. And we have the message, so instead of the current meth the file path, we're going to have the uh, thing called selected photo. And it says here that doesn't work. We need to have probably a two string. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so that should bring up a photo and put it into our image view. Now you probably see some duplicate code here. That's always a good sign that you can, you can uh, combine some things. So I'm going to cut this uh, few lines out here and put them in front of the if statement. So the down here below we also have image view and we're defining it there, so let's delete that. Okay, so that looks more like a little less duplicate code. Um, let's see, these two here are duplicates, so let's cut him out and put him up and delete these two lines. So just a little bit of refactoring to get rid of some duplicate lines. Okay, so that kind of condenses our code a little bit and uh, reduces some duplicates. All right, let's run the program, see what happens. All right, the program's up and running. Let's try the load button. And we're going to select from the image gallery. So there it is, select a photo, choose the camera folder, and it says that one's already been taken, and it's loaded. So if you ran this on a real phone, it would be more interesting, and you would be able to see more than just this virtual kitchen. But we got the load button working, we got the take button working, and it looks to me like the last thing is to do is keep track of these URLs or URIs and put them in a list. So the list button is coming up next.